Today, we are talking about proofs. And we are going to begin with a direct proof. And, and first, I'll, I guess I'll start with a definition. In a direct proof, the given information or premises are stated, then you arrive at the conclusion using valid forms of reasoning. Those valid forms of reasoning, that's what we've been studying. That's the modus ponens, modus tollens, law of syllogism, law of contrapositive. That's it. All right. The given information, well, those are your things. I like to think of this like cooking. The given information, this, those are your ingredients. Ingredients. And the valid form of reading, those are your tools. So you take your ingredients, you put them together, then you use your tools to come out with the final product. So you put the flour, the sugar, the baking soda, the milk and the eggs, and then you put them in the, you mix them up with your mixer and you put them in the oven and you come out with a cake, right? You can't do things backwards. You have, there's a certain order to baking. So same with logic. So let's just do an example. Here we go. I have my premises. Those are my ingredients. I have my conclusion. That's where I want to go. That's my final product. And I'm going to use my tools to arrive at the conclusion. The way I'm going to do this is systematically. All right. We've done this all year long, and now we're going to use it logically. So the first thing I want to do is pull out the ingredients. I'm going to pull out if P, then Q. And I'm going to call that. I can use that because it's one of the premises. Then I'm going to pull out another ingredient. I'm going to see what goes together. I'm going to pull out a not Q. Also, another ingredient. Then I use one of my tools to put those two together. If P then Q, it's not Q. Therefore, let's say we know it's not P. And the tool I used was modus tollens. And it is implied that if I just write modus tollens down, it's from the previous two lines. You don't have to write that lines one and two if it's the, it's the two that precede the number you're on. If, if three comes from one and two, you don't really have to write it. But if it's line seven and you put together six and three, then you need to tell me, okay? This recipe should be complete step by step, okay? No jumping around, nothing left. Then I have a not P, and I look at my, that's, that's my new, and what I need to do, well, I pull out another ingredient, R then P. That's a premise. I put those two together, and I end up with not R. And what did I use? Again, I used modus tollens. Fantastic. Direct proof is the simplest, most easy to understand of all of them. All right. The next type of proof, I need to go back and remember some vocabulary. And I referred to this, but let's make it for sure. Okay. Uh, in a conditional statement, it's always one then the other. There's an arrow, which means that I have one, and then this one should follow. So the first one, the first part of my conditional statement, that is called the antecedent. And the second part is called the consequent. So the consequent follows the antecedent. And one way to remember that, if you play poker or something like that, you always have to put an ante into the pot. That's before you get your cards. And the consequent, well, that sounds like consequence. Something happened, therefore there are consequences. The second type of proof is a conditional proof. And here's the definition of that. A conditional proof begins with an assumption that the antecedent is true then logical reason is used to show that the consequent must also be true. In other words, a conditional proof shows that the antecedent implies the consequent. I'm going to show a connection between one and then the other. The only difference between this and a direct proof is I'm making that assumption. I'm assuming something's true, and then I'm going to show that I get something else. All right, here is our example. Our premises are, if P, then R, if S, then R, and our conclusion is, if P, then not S. 
you may notice I probably could do this directly, and that's good. I'm going to just do it as an example. I know this is pretty elementary. I'm going to do it as conditionally so you can have a nice, easy example. Okay, the first line for every conditional proof is to tell the reader this is a conditional proof. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to assume something. And what am I going to assume? I'm going to assume the antecedent antecedent, antecedent is true. And remember, the antecedent is the first part. So we're going to assume that P is true. Notice that is not one of my premises. So with a with a conditional proof, you actually get another kind of premise in there. And that's what's really powerful about it. Now, if I know the if P is true, then I can pull out a P then R. That's a premise. I can put those two together and get R. And that's modus ponens. I can now pull out another premise. And I can put those together. Now, some of you may not like this. And I'll just do it just, just in case. If you wanted to, couldn't I just say R then not S? Changing four to five around? Yes, I can. And the, the tool I'm using for that, that's the law of contrapositive. So you wouldn't have to do that, but that's good. Now I'm gonna put three and five together, giving me not S. So that's modus ponens, lines three and five. Then finally, so notice I'm going to start with my antecedent and I end at a consequent. The last thing I need to do is write a conclusionary sentence. Assuming P is true, the truth of not S is established. Therefore, therefore, that's when I put my, if P, then not S. A little bit different, okay? You, I started off assuming the antecedent. In my one through six, I have my consequent. Then my conclusion is not until after that. And I'm showing there's a connection that P must imply not S. And there's my conclusion there. I didn't write a sentence down here that said if P then not S. Hope that's good. That's okay. We will do many examples like this in class. The check for understanding today is a proof. And here we go. The premises are if a then B, then C. Notice those are in parentheses. Treat those as whole. Now I've got this all laid out for you. And then if it's not the case, if A then B, then D. And another premise, C then E. And our conclusionary is, is conclusion is going to be if not E then D. Now what I've done is I've laid out the whole proof for you, for you and I want you to fill in the blanks. There's line three, what goes here. There's line five, the reason I got two five. Line seven, what, what, how that comes, and then finally fill in the statement at the end. All right, I hope this makes sense, and we'll see you soon.